Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. What happened here? What? Okay, well, I need to pick that up. We changed a bunch of light bulbs out here yesterday and I don't remember that falling down. You think you'd remember that, right? Anyways, this whole area is just a mess. The electricity is always a problem out here. Just randomly stopped working, so I replaced another GFCI that's all the way down there. And that, that didn't work, and it turned out that it just, it wasn't wired right. So try it again, and boom, power. I must have not gotten that hung back up right. Hmm. Oops, it's fine. The fuchsias fizzle out this time of year anyways when it gets really hot and humid. They're fun, like maybe late March through early to mid-July, and then it's just, uh, they don't do so great here in the heat, not with the humidity and everything. Speaking of which, it is dis disgusting outside today. The fan, I'm not turning that off. It is sticky. It's only like 90 degrees, but oh my goodness, the humidity. I don't mind the heat and the humidity when I'm just like sitting and chilling by the fan, obviously, not so bad. But for doing yard work, being out in the sun, nope, absolutely not, I don't think so. I do have a few things I'd like to get done this. Why did I start the vlog when I'm just sitting here and have no plans on actually doing anything at the moment? Well, here we are. I have this area here. I'm gonna start getting it tidied up and we'll really just redo in the whole area because all of this over here, the table, the tiki bar, all the mess, hopefully in the next week to two weeks, that will all be gone. The space will be opened up and I want to just stage up this wall right here with flowers. Just fill it up with flowers. I think that'll be beautiful. There's a hot tub behind all this and you can't use it. It's been broken for a couple of years. There are people who said they were gonna repair it and then they just kind of vanished. So that's all right. First world problems, not gonna complain about it. But since you can't even use that area, I figured that this would look nice with just lots of color going on. So hopefully I'll get something done with that the next few days what I have been working on out here this morning earlier this morning finishing up some storm damage pruning from this Rose of Sharon that got knocked down by the storm and then my neighbor notified me by notified I mean said woohoo <laughs> your backyard's flooding I was like what there's just water like all the way down to here and up through here and down through there and it looked like a whole bunch of mud had washed down from probably from all the storms we had a couple weeks ago and just filled in this storm drain here the storm drain is the drainage for this house right there the one right next to it the one next to that one the one next to that one and the one next to mine and then my yard there's pipes and all kinds of well it's, more, it's just pipes lots of drainage to lead everything down to this area which is why i don't do anything over here because it's just kind of always a swampy mess but not to this extent there's never standing water so i had to come in and prune out this rose of sharon because it was blocking the access to the sewer and it's my responsibility here to make sure that that storm sewer is opened so i started digging that out it was a shame to have to cut down another rose of sharon i left some of it in there there's also a big honeysuckle growing in there <laughs> i didn't even notice it's a good thing that got cut out but that did open things up the water was pulled up well, probably about down to here and then came up right around here and just mud. It was disgusting. Did not smell good. So just getting that one part opened up helped get the rest of that. But I have to get in there and get the other sides opened up, which I will do when it cools down some more. And here's all the stuff that I need to bundle up. Big, big, big pile of stuff that needs to get taken care of. So that I will do in a moment. By in a moment, I mean in a little while. First, I need to hit up a local nursery because I need to pick up a couple of plants that I'm using for a different project. I'll bring you all along for, again, hopefully in the next week or two. But it's, you know, the way plant sales have been lately. It's like if you see something, you gotta nab it up and they're on big discount right now. So I'm going to go grab those, looking for some panicle hydrangeas, for some planters, and um, poke around and look at some plants while we're there because I have this big bare spot over there where that Rose of Sharon tree is. I'd like to replant that with something evergreen at some point. So let's see what the options are. Just have fun at the nursery. And then either tonight or tomorrow when it's supposed to be cooler outside, I can handle more of these things. First thing I have to do is get all that stuff bundled up. But if I need to go out in public, I think I'll do that before I go get disgusting, bundling up all the wood and digging out even more mud. So let's go to a nursery. Oh, so many beautiful plants and a lot of copywritten music. Aren't these echinaceas beautiful? Gonna have to talk in short bursts because of the background music. This has no name. 
Do we see a name on here? Stays compact, lots of info, Monrovia, full sun. Oh, it's right on the front. Wild berry cone flower. Yeah. I should have seen that. That's beautiful. It's like a nice bubblegum pink. Flighter in person. Hey, I like these Veronicas. The name on it just says Veronica. <laughs> Look, they have these cute short little stubby plumes on them. They're a lighter pink color. Not quite mauve, but sort of getting there. Man, there are bees everywhere on these. Four to nine size. Monrovia has made their, okay, 16, 14 inches tall by 16. It's so much color and loveliness. Why did I start that shot with just showing pavement? I swear, lots of pretty points here. All right, there's what I'm looking for. And there's more right here. Okay, and more right here. They are well stocked on hydrangeas. And it looks like they're mostly bobos. I need standard form pinky winkies or quick fires. Man, look at how gorgeous that is though. This makes me want to plant up a hill with just nothing but hydrangeas. How cool would that look? If you have a steep slope with a good amount of sun, at least morning into afternoon, and just fill that up with a whole bunch of paniculatas. Oh, it'd be stunning. Okay, I found two pinky winkies. They're a good size too. Poke around a little bit more just for fun. I don't even know if those are gonna fit in the car. That'll be tricky. Oh, look at these little bitty baby beech trees. Those are cute. Only other thing that I'm kind of curious about while I'm here, just evergreens. So I have a big spot that needs to be filled in the yard where Rose of Sharon died. What are you? So it's nice and thick. Oh, it's a green giant. Okay. It's a very thick little green giant. That would probably be too big for the spot that I need to fill up. Whoa, look at that one. That's really thick. Hollies might work. I don't know. I like hollies. They're kind of sharp and stabby. So I don't really want them in an area that I walk around in a bunch. Ooh, that's a neat looking plant. It's a cypress of some kind. Look at the trunk. All that fun moss growing out of there. Texidonium distictium. Just, 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 you see it, it's right there. Peeve Minaret, Peeve Minaret. Yeah, it looks cool. That's the whole point there, and so are these. These are beautiful also. So the Atlantica Galaca Cedrus. Neat, pretty blue cedars. These get really big and they have a fun, like, not quite weepy habit to them, it's weepy-ish, but just really nice and airy and blue. Very blue. Oh. oh, these would be so pretty. They don't look fantastic right now, but someday these will be beautiful. These espaliers, this is, it's just this apple espalier. Hat trick. That's the type of apple this is. Just realized I got so distracted by them, I didn't even really show them to you. So that's an apple. Is this also an apple? No, oh, that's an apple. Darcy heirloom. Those are fun. I have the area of where the wall where my garage is if you watch the videos what I'm talking about that I thought an espalier would be so pretty going up the side of but I just haven't really found any that I was crazy about and I don't know if I would want to do an apple I don't think I would I think that I would probably prefer a pear apples are so pretty and cute though I mean look at these fruits Aren't those adorable so tiny and pink I have no idea if this is an eating variety or not. No clue. It's just cute and pretty. Ooh, there's another one. I should probably, okay, Asian pear. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Very pretty. See, I just, I like the foliage better on the pears than the apples. You can't see why. These are nice. Espalias are so expensive. I don't even see the price on these but I'm just going to assume that those are probably not for this year. Maybe next year. Oh, well, one six, I mean, for an Espalia, that's not that bad, but you can see there's some spots missing on there. I don't know what the price is on the pair, though. It doesn't matter, can't do it. That's not what I'm here for. Oh, more Rose of Sharon. I love them so much. What is this? I don't think it's an Aphrodite. There's, they're almost 
iridescent. Here's a tag. Just look at that to begin with. Minerva. Single large lavender pink blooms with magenta red eyes. Blooms late spring until frost hardy. Yeah. Oh, I love a Rose of Sharon. That's what I'm replacing right now. I guess I could just replace it with another Rose of Sharon. The one that's there, it's doing okay. Just got torn down by a storm. And pink would be a good replacement. The one that was there that got blown over had white flowers on it, but when I bought it, it was, it was supposed to be an Aphrodite, but instead it had big white double flowers on it, which I was fine with. But I would have preferred probably pink. This is fluffy. Rise and Fall Cypress. Oh, this is neat. It's like a Muppet. It reminds me of something from Sesame Street. Oh, and it has lots of spider webs in it. Oh, the cute too. Okay, I just came here to get those hydrangeas. That's enough of all this. It's going to be very hot here very soon. <laughs> I should get out of here. Oh wait, what was I thinking? You can't leave without showing the house plants. There they are. Lots and lots and lots of house plants. So pretty peperomias. Spathophyllums, Dithambuchias, Ficus lauratas, Altissimas, Sansevieria, Dracaenas, Monsteras. All the pretty common stuff. It's like the Instagram plant groups just barfed in here. And some Calatheas, this triangle palm. Oh, that's a cute one. Oh, short and stumpy. That. Oh, that is a cool pot. That would be so beautiful with a water lily or a dwarf lotus or just like a mini aquatic planter thing going on in there. I love this. Not even gonna look for a price. I don't have anywhere to put that right now, but it's pretty. Oh my God, the plant is infested with beetles. This is gonna be a long, like five minute drive home on all the windows down, giving that a spray as soon as I get home. Yeah, made it home. If by infestation, I meant that there were like, I don't know, a dozen bugs in the car. Wasn't actually all that bad. I'll come in here and try and open this up. Really? These are brand new snips. Should cut right through that. Not brand new, I've had them for a little while, but I haven't used them a ton. Come on now, there we go. This reminds me of Christmas vacation when I do those things in the tree, popped open and ate Clark. One little twig didn't make it, but the rest, Look pretty good. Pinky Winky Hydrangeas. It's a panicle hydrangea. They can take a good amount of sunlight. Just the same as the vanilla strawberries that I have down there. But these are newer. They're more improved than those vanilla strawberries and they shouldn't flop as much. The flower heads on these start off white. As you can see here, they can get up to 16 inches long and they'll fade from down low up to the tips into a really pretty pink color. Again, similar to those vanilla strawberries, but the flower heads on them are supposed to keep expanding up and out. Like I said, up to 16 inches, staying white at the tips with the pink down below. I love the pinky winkies. And I think this would be perfect for the person that I'm using them for. There's the tag. If you were wondering, it's a zone three through eight. So this is a good one for a pot, especially here in zone six. Not gonna have any issues getting these through the winter. I say the plural because I, I got two. Gonna have these framing an area. I was thinking about leaving them wrapped up until I can take them over and get them planted up, but I don't know for sure when that will be. And they need a good drink. These are bone dry. I hope I'm not moving the camera around too much and making people dizzy. If I am, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna water these in, bundle up some twigs and get those out to the yard waste. And that is all I feel like doing today. Look at that, even the bananas are like, ugh. That's gross out. I just dropped this one in that planter to get an idea of what the hydrangea trees looked like in these pool pots, because that's something I've kind of dabbled with the idea of doing. And I gotta say, I like it. That's not even potted up in there. I'll, I just realized too, I have all this gravel down in here and cement chunks that I need to put back in this. Well, that's not a big deal. These don't weigh much right now. I'll go ahead and do that and then get them watered in and hopefully we'll pick back up with some planting or just, you know, whatever goes on out here. It's a vlog. Gardening stuff will happen, probably. Dang, that looks pretty there. The hydrangea, and you can see the Super Tune Invisible Bubblegum behind it. Doesn't fully want to focus through the window, but yeah, I really like that. I'm gonna have trouble parting with that. Hmm. I love them so much. Pulled it out of the pot. I was like, this is too tempting. No, not really. I had to get all of the gravel out of the wheelbarrow here 
back into the bottom of that pot. That's because I had to use a wheelbarrow to excavate all the mud and digging and trenching this area up and seeing if it's going to fill back in. It's really wet along the slope, but I'm not finding any kind of leaks anywhere. I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure I did, that I have the drip here turned off. If this area really doesn't need it to be running the way it was running. I set this up last year because I had all these ferns transplanted over here and like, I want to say early to mid-July, probably about exactly a year ago, and that's, you know, not the time to transplant ferns. But, you know, with all the health stuff that was going on, I was like, I'm not going to be able to water these or take care of them. So I just, I had drip run to them. It worked really well, got them established. All of them, except for, I want to say two, made it through the winter time. And uh, they were ones that were like just around the corner where the soil's really, really tight when you get close to that maple tree. So I'm not totally shocked that those didn't make it. But these will eventually fill in this whole area here. What's happening? Why is this turning into a garden tour? We just chat about plants. There's a lot going on right now. I mentioned at the start of the video the hot tub stuff, right? Pretty sure I did. It's been broken for a long time. Didn't really care last year because I couldn't use it anyways. I don't know if I could really use this now. I mean, I think I could. That might be painful. You know, I have a big divot in my shoulder that has the grafted skin over it and there's just, it doesn't feel great when it gets touched. Like anytime I hug a guy and they do the, you know, that stupid pat thing, doesn't feel good because it's just skin on top of muscle in my shoulder blade. There's no, like, any type of layer of fat there anymore. So having jets that spin and push on it probably won't feel great. Anyways, that's all besides the point. I talked about how they just decided they weren't gonna come. But well, wouldn't you know, right after I said that, Universe works in mysterious ways. You get a phone call and they said, hey, we'll be out Friday, which is tomorrow for me. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do here. I was gonna get this all planted up, you know, and I wanted to get a drip run to this area because I'm having some trouble keeping some things watered in this spot. I was gonna split off the drip that I shut off over there. The pressure right there is fantastic. I was gonna split it and put a valve so I can shut down that area where we just were with the ferns and let it run through and around back behind everything down low and that way I can put an individual drip on everything that's over here and then you know just plant it up with flowers and house plants but I don't I don't know what to do now I love when you start a video saying hey here's what I'm gonna do and then what 15 minutes later you go, oh hey never mind none of that's happening oh, I suppose the important thing to do is focus on what can be done and what I need to do big time and i meant to talk about this in the last video is that i need to move this lantana tree been kind of difficult keeping this one hydrated in this spot because the drip just like i was mentioning over there there's some pressure issues and i think this plant might be too thirsty for this location the majority of the water pressure over here is devoted to this planter and the bird of paradise so the rostrata back there it doesn't need it and then there's a sprayer going down to the heliconia but the sprayer apparently isn't enough for the lantern, it doesn't matter. Regardless of the water pressure, I wanted to move this anyways, even though I love it. I think it's beautiful. It's just, it comes out over the door too much and you have to like pivot to get around it. I don't like doing that, especially in the morning and late afternoon when it's covered in honeybees. Love the honeybees, but I don't, that's, that's like a little bit too close for me. Don't mind it occasionally, but not every single time I go in and out that door. I go in and out that door a lot, <laughs> so. It's got to go. I need to move it somewhere else. Why well, I talk about like that's going to be an easy thing. It's not going to be that hard to transplant it, but I need to find the right pot for it. I have lots of pots, but they're mostly little bitty baby pots. What am I going to put this in? Hmm. Okay, I think this is going to work. I moved the Andromeda heliconia, which I just now noticed the bottom of it is full of maple tree seedlings I need to pull out. Move that into this blue diamond planter, and then I can put the... Lantana, I think that'll work for the lantana tree. So I think that I'm probably gonna move this over to that hot tub wall. So that would, not on top of the wall, but in front, you'll see. So I think that that would look nice over there. So even though I have a lot of mismatched pottery, if I can at least stay within the blues, probably also throw in a Talavera pot along with all those. But, but if it's mostly blue, I think that'll work. A Little bit of soil in there. And then I suppose it just pull this out, see, uh, how easy this is to get out. I have a bunch of other things planted underneath here that I'm going to lightly lift and scoot because I don't want to do any damage to them. I mean, it's kind of hard to move something without doing damage to the roots, but this will, this should be okay. All right, my face is right in here and I forgot that I'm not crazy about the way lantana smells. Gently lift. All right, lost a few roots, but it's not that bad. This was in a, 10 inch container so yeah 
And I probably should have gone in there with a shovel. I've done that a little bit more carefully, but this will this will work, especially since it's going to go up on drip. I think it'll be okay. Come in here, lift this up. <laughs> Just put the. You can't see anything I'm doing right now, can you? That's all done. I'm gonna water this in very, very heavily. Nice that the camera's pointing at what I'm talking about here. Make sure that stays consistently moist. You see the spring planter right here? Did that one in the springtime. It's pansies and Gerber daisies. And it was doing great until like, I don't know, a week or so ago. And uh, the heat, it did what the heat does to pansies. That's all right, summer's still going. I didn't really expect those to do much in July. Anyways, over here, swapped that out with a, no surprise, with a heliconia. I don't think the heliconia is going to get so wide that the sprayer won't be able to get to it, so it probably do better here. That lantana was so filled out from the top that I just wasn't really able to get the water to it very efficiently. I might have to take a sponge to this pot. Some of that stuff's looking like it doesn't want to come off very easily. You see this caladium? Isn't that pretty? Florida beauty. That's one of the ones that got planted up several weeks ago and couldn't even see it because the lantana tree was in the way. I also put a whole bunch of begonias in here. I have the double up pink from Proven Winners and just some pink dragon wing begonias in here. And I know that that's a lot of begonias, but I really wanted to get them side by side so I could compare them. And I don't know, the double up pink, I don't, I don't fully get it. I've got to give it some time though, right? So you can't judge them too quickly. And of course, right where you don't want the water is right where I spilled it. Give that a good rinse too. Trek that all over the house. I do have a drain that runs in right over here, right under that croton. And then that goes underneath the patio over to the drainage stuff that I was showing earlier. Oh, so much soil got trapped over here. I don't think that the, the gecko watering one's probably the appropriate tool for this. Should probably use something with some more pressure because this is just, well, that's just wasteful. It's not gonna do a very good job. I'll handle that in a little bit. Starting to get dark-ish. I do like the dent that I made in this spot here. Getting this opened up and start putting different plants over here and make that look nicer. I had a rosemary and a lavender that were over here that are going elsewhere, not in my yard. So those have been moved. It's starting to feel good outside. I think it's gonna be really pretty tomorrow. We will see. Oh, good morning, pumpkin. Enjoying your breakfast, you need me to rotate your plate. Sometimes she waits for me to, like she'll sit down and be like, oh, I can't reach that. Want me to give it a spin? There you go. There you go, pumpkin. Finally found a wet food that this cat likes. It's been like three years of experimenting and trying different things. I was going too bougie with like all these fancy type foods. Well, and it turned out fancy feast. That's, that's the one. That's the wet food that she will eat. Background, the vet said I needed to get her onto wet food. And I was like, okay, but she doesn't like it. And here we are. It's like two and a half years. Finally found something she consistently will eat. I know that's neither here nor there. It's morning. My brain's still waking up. My cat Leia bloomed. Y'all remember this one? This one bloomed back in maybe February or March. I'm not sure. The flowers are smaller this time than they were the first time, but it also did its blooming, its spiking when it was outside and it was a lot more warm and it was getting a lot, I mean a lot more sun. Really too much sun because some of its leaves got scorched, but sometimes that's how it goes with cat layers. In my experience, got to get them into the light. This is the Irene Finney Springs Best. Just realized I made that sound like I'm saying if you have a cat lay, you should stick out in the sun and cook it. Don't do that. That's not, not what I meant. They can take a surprising amount of sun and sometimes take it a little bit too far and realize, oh, that was too much sun. I had it in the same spot on the patio for the majority of the springtime, but I guess when the seasons changed over and the angle of the sun changed, it was just a smidge too intense for this one. No fragrance yet, but with the last set of flowers this one put up it took about I don't know three or four days and then it started to just smell absolutely amazing. I brought it inside because it had ants all over it. The ants will nibble at this sappy stuff that comes out the ends of the buds. It's not happy sap in the orchid community. Not my favorite terminology for that but it does it attracts ants and they'll chew on it and in my experience if you don't get the ants away from the buds then oftentimes you'll lose them so Brought it inside where I could keep it away from the ants. Beautiful morning. It's so nice out. I really am enjoying looking out this window and seeing the little 
heliconia flowers and the petunias and that Persian shield. In a few weeks, there will be some big banana cannas sticking up through here. And I have a passion vine that's planted just right around the corner. You can kind of see it. Hopefully that'll fill out. Be able to see some of that through the window. That would be nice. I bet the gingers will be blooming pretty soon too. That's going to be fun. I need to prune the bananas. That was something I was going to do, but I didn't because I ended up filling up all the yard waste stuff with the, uh, the Rose of Sharon that had to be chopped up and removed. So that's something I should probably do. That'd be a good time to do it actually, because I think we're going to have some rain. So if I'm in there tugging and pulling at the banana trees, the rain will come through and rehydrate them. So they'll be nice and happy again. Bunkin, where'd you go? Gotta love the pets. Wake up in the morning, surrounded by animals, and once everybody's fed, all gone. They don't need me anymore. Oh, there she is. You're just patrolling, doing your rounds, making sure nothing's changed. You so cute, Pumpkin. All right, back to work. Go outside, play with the plants. Last night, I had a thought. And the thought was that maybe it might look nice in here to take out the begonias that I don't really care for, the double up pinks. Just not crazy about them. I'm gonna try them off in their own planter, try them off. I will try them out in their own planter. And what about a black coral elephant ear in here? Because I have those over here, right in, in there. So that would flow quite nicely, I think. And then a vine going up that trellis. And the rostrata, that's getting moved. That's not where that's supposed to stay. I just didn't want it to go straight into the sun. It was getting some good shade from the Robolini palm above it. But it should be fully acclimated to the sun right now. So that shouldn't be an issue. Not something I have to worry about. But anyways, I don't know why I even brought that up. I'm not doing that right now, but just give me your thoughts. Maybe I'll listen or just do whatever I feel like. We will see. But it, with the hot tub situation going on here, it's possible that they may need to move this from around and come up through here. They say they can fit it through the gate over there, but they also said that they could lift it several weeks ago and get it out of here when they showed up. And we said, told them, you need to bring more people. And they're like, oh no, two guys will do the trick. And then here we are a few months later, it's still here. It's turned out they were wrong. Anyways, since this all needs to go and it's an eyesore and I'm trying to somewhat pretty up this area, there's no point in going full blown, fill this up with flowers right now because it's potentially possible that you're going to need to be able to get in through here. So I got some repots done and then started to work on some drip line, just lay out stuff. So I know if there are any parts I need to get ordered but that's been worked on i fixed the bubble planter that's what this is called they're called bubble wrap cylinder planters these ones with the little bumps on them got that glued back together cut back the begonia that was in there from last year i think i need to just bump that up into a larger pot though needed the cut back anyways it got so messed up when the storm knocked it down happy with what's been done over here oh and i planted this tricolor sedum in these boots isn't it cute there's still some dirt on the boots but i don't mind because it's it's just cute that's actually going on my front porch. Neither here nor there, because what I'm thinking would be smart to do, since I don't necessarily trust them that they'll be able to get the hot tub through there. And this is something I'm tired of looking at. Even though this table isn't ready to go to its new home quite yet, I think it may be just a good idea for multiple reasons. Go ahead and get it out of here. So that's what I'm going to do. Not really looking forward to it, because <laughs> everything that's on this table needs a place. It's mostly, there's just drip supplies everywhere on this table. So uh, I just need to come up with a more organized way. To, well, I have a pretty organized way. I keep all my drips up in my garage, but I'm using it so much right now that it's just kind of all over the place in Toby's towels from getting out of the pool. Yeah, I just, it makes sense. I'm gonna handle that. Do a quick before, not quick. I'm gonna do it before and after because it would just take too long to film the process. We'll be back in a few hours. See how much I can get done. There is like a really cool breeze and then some thunder. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna get what I can get done done before it starts to rain and hopefully this will all be gone or at least most of it. Oh, look at that. So much room for activities. Clean-ish. I hosed it off. Power washer needs to go into the shop. Something's wrong with it. But got all the muck and stuff blown off and moved away the tiki bar still here because it turned out after moving the table and all the chairs and all the stuff that was around it and getting that organized that my shoulder was starting to hurt so was when i have to call it quits and take breaks got a baby step back into doing the heavy lifting you know but i'm happy with this very happy to have that done it's so nice having things 
opened up again. I do still need to figure out a storage solution for my drip supplies, which are already so well organized, at least as far as the drip stuff that I want to keep out here. So the Tiki bar, I called it quits on moving that, that around for multiple reasons. One, the table and everything, all the stuff that was right here, that had to go into the garage just for a few days. We'll get that moved soon enough. I need someone with a pickup truck that's not gonna fit in the back of my car. So uh, that's where that is, just hanging out for right now. But that pretty much filled up the garage. And behind the tiki bar is where I have all my old pots and all kinds of gardening supplies. Lots of stuff is stored back there. I know it's a mess. I mean, that's the whole point. We're cleaning up here, right? So in order to handle this, gotta get that table out of the garage. I would like to find some sort of like outdoor cabinet. I've done a lot of looking. Holy crap, they're expensive. Like just an outdoor cabinet. They're made out of plastic, about 33 inches high, 40 inches wide. They open from the front, like four or $500. What? So I'm gonna be doing some price hunting for all that. Basically, I need to figure out the storage solution for all my supplies that I need out here before I even get moving with that. But we'll get there. I mean, I'm happy to have this. I wasn't even planning on having this done for another week or maybe even two. So it's nice to have that opened up. Always good to have more clean space. And yeah, that's on hold till I figure out what's going on with the hot tub company. No reason to keep working on that anymore until I know what's happening there. And I think the biggest thing I have left to do is trim up these bananas, which isn't even a big thing. That's a pretty quick and easy job. And I also think I'm probably going to have to do something about these pumpkins. I love them but they're taking up a lot of space here. There are some tiny little pumpkins in here though. There's, I saw one earlier, where'd it go? There it is. Can we see it? I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So I'm gonna give those a few more days to keep doing their pollinating with any of the flowers that are further in and the stuff that's coming out. Gonna have to cut that, because it's just, it's, there's not enough space here. Feels dangerous. I don't want people feeling like they have to like walk around especially with the hose. That's another nice thing about getting this space cleared out over here is I think I'm gonna be able to get this hose onto a hose reel because once that tiki bar is gone, I'm gonna have access to a part of the wall where maybe I can have something mounted. That would be awesome. All right, I'm gonna go in here. The lower stuff cut out of the banana clumps. That'll be fun. I always enjoy doing that. Hey Toby, yeah, good boy. You hungry? I know why that's your all over mine. Yeah, that's why you've been all over me. You want some food. Dinner time for the Toby. Here you go, Toby. Good boy, Toby. You're freaking, eat your food. Good boy. I don't even remember what, oh, the bananas. They're supposed to be before. I trimmed the bananas. This vlog is such a disaster. Okay, let's have a look. So it probably looks kind of heavy, but not a big deal. They grow so quickly, it doesn't matter. I actually like it better when I can see those trunks or pseudo stems that are in there. The whole reason that, well, there are a few reasons. The reasoning behind giving them the prune is one, just to tidy it up. When the lower growth from earlier in the spring is held on for too long, it starts to yellow. It just doesn't look that good. Then as all of the larger growth, the more mature growth comes out the tops, all the stuff on the inside starts to get shaded and it's useless. There's no reason for it to even have those leaves in there if they're not getting any light. So that's why I like to come in and just prune it out. If they're gonna be devoting energy to keeping leaves alive, I'd rather it be ones that are actually going to work and soaking up some sun and helping to put out new growth, not to try to keep leaves alive that are buried deep in the dark. It just doesn't make sense, but it's absolutely not a must. It's not something you have to do with them. It's just something I do probably twice a, growing season if even i'll probably be doing it again is that a japanese beetle nope just a yellow jacket that's good i do think banana trees look a lot better when they're nice and full and all filled out but again it's only for like a week or so and they're pushing out new stuff from the top already so like in a week and a half maybe two weeks it won't really even be noticeable if they got a prune especially along the trunks the trunks are always what bother me the most after going in and removing the leaves, but they put on more size, those start to fill out and that pushes out those leaf bases and makes them look nice again. Time to give these a fertilizing too. I'm a little bit behind on that. I gave them a heavy, heavy amending and some granular fertilizer, but they really, the bananas, you give them some liquid. They always appreciate that. They're heavy feeders. I am so happy to have this space not fully cleared out, but at least the beginning process of that has started. 
There are a lot of things I've wanted to do out here this year that have been reliant on getting that table out of here and on getting that tiki bar out here. But I want to, I don't want to talk about it too much, I don't want to spoil it, but it, there's going to be things and I want a lot of plants around them waiting to have the things. First, I had to make the space for all the things. There you go. Yeah, the only other big thing that I've done out here that we hadn't talked about was that I came up here and did a lot of seeding. Some of it was even accidental. Now, right, well, here's what happened. What I had planned on doing, and for the most part, what happened, is I put taller varieties in the back. So in the back there is the uh, Tithonia, the Mexican sunflower. Gets fairly tall, usually between four and seven feet. They have a wide range, of pretty orange flowers on them. And then in front of those, I have the Italian white sunflowers, which I believe the variety that I have gets about four or five feet tall. I'll have to double check. They just have pretty white flowers on them. And then I have some of the California giant dahlias, which also about four feet tall in that area too. So there's going to be a blend of color right there towards the back. And then everything towards the front was just a mix of, I say dahlia, California giant zinnia, 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 whatever you call it, not dahlia. I don't know what I said, but it's zinnias. Then everything else that was towards the front was just going to be a mix of zinnia and cosmos. I have the queen lime red, queen lime orange, there's one called Pinka, and probably a few others, and then several varieties of Cosmos. There's the Coastal Shell Mix, the Cupcakes and Saucers. I think there may have been one called Lemonade. So I wanted all that sort of from the middle area towards, kind of towards the front, but I wanted a gap in the front, so I wanted to put some trailers and some perennial type trailers in the front here. And as I was standing up here, I was standing right there on that brick, I looked at my seed packets in my hand and I could see right through them. So there were three seed packets at the bottom just busted out of and so there's probably a big ring of seeds somewhere right where i wanted to put some of the perennials so i'm going to give those i don't know a few days and see what pops up where because i have no idea i did i wanted things like somewhat chunked out so i would know what everything is it's pretty easy to tell if the queen lime breads and then the california giant mix and i think there's one here called cut and come again mix too it's a lot of zinnias. But I had this sedum here, and I was gonna, but I, I think I spilled a whole bunch of seeds right there. So just wait and see, see what happens there. And then the Ponceus trifoliata, the uh, dwarf, it's a super dwarf, flying dragon that was also going to go. So it's all right, just wait a few days. A lot of the seeds are already popping up. Like a ton of them are already popping up. I did all this planting like five days ago. With this warmth, they should come up very, very quickly. So I'll just look for a patch where there aren't seeds coming up and then I'll go ahead and put those in there. I think that's probably my only option there. I'm so excited to see this get filled up with color though. I'm a little bit disappointed that the three of those seed packets busted out the bottom because I didn't plant all of my seeds because the, you want a succession plant, right? Get the first round in right now, and then I usually wait about two, two and a half weeks, do another round, two, two and a half weeks, and do another round. There's still lots of time for scatter type seeds, at least where I live. There's still plenty of season left to have those going. But it's not a big deal. I can take seed from the flowers that are here. Who knows what will come from them since there's such a wide variety of stuff going on here, but it'll still be fun to find out and see what goes on. And I still, my expectations are low for this spot because of those chipmunks and the bunny rabbits. I've never been great at growing sunflowers, not because I don't know how, but because they usually get eaten very, very, very quickly. And I thought about putting some dull cloaks on top of the areas where those little sunflowers are, but the chipmunks still, I mean, they just, well, they dig right under those things. So I don't really know what the point would be, but I don't know, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. I had thought about putting the other, okay, there's just a big weed in there right now, but putting that variegated sedum in this foot planter, since I have the tricolor sedum over in with the, whatever it's called, the, what was it, the boots that I showed earlier? Cause that's a fun, interesting, odd pairing, but I don't, I don't know about that. I would really like that variegated sedum to be in the ground. Traditionally plant up that foot with like a pineapple, and sometimes I'll add a calibrac and that's just, I don't know, it's just what I've always done. This is just, it's such a beautiful sedum. We know that it's going to do its absolute best if it's in the ground, it'll be able to spread and look prettiest that way. It's so pretty, I love looking at it. Makes me happy. I would love to see that as more of a carpet across the top up here. I think that'll look really nice. No. 
I knew it. I just, there was something in the air. I was like, I have a feeling they're around. The Japanese beetles haven't been a big problem here in a while. Like, they'll be really bad over across the river, but then here in St. Louis County, not terrible. So it's been a few years since I've had to deal with them, but I'm no stranger to these guys. I'll set some traps, which there's always controversy around. For right now, since I only see a few, man, they do damage fast. That helicone was looking fine yesterday. It's gonna hand spray peppermint oil. That's going to put a coating on them that basically suffocates them. It's mean, I know, but it's also effective. There are lots of remedies for Japanese beetles. They're always something that requires some work. So uh, it's just something we got to walk around and stay on top of, especially when I planted all those roses. Those things will do a number on roses. They'll cause a lot of problems. Just eat those things alive. Eat those things alive. I think that's kind of understood when they're chewing on plants, right? The Fiesta Caladium popped open a leaf today. It's got a few more coming out from down below. It ain't pretty. It's so fun. And this is a very small leaf for the Fiesta. They'll get bigger, but they have fun round shapes to them. And it looks like there's some sort of, I don't know what that is. It's tiny and it has a slug on it. Could be remnants from an alocasia that I had planted in here last year. It could be tiny little offshoots coming up from the Florida Beauty Caladium. I believe that there's one of those in here. And there's a spring fling in here, which I was hoping it would be more open than this by the time I had to finish the video, but isn't that gorgeous? Love spring fling caladium. They do have a crepey appearance to them, but the leaf is actually pretty sturdy. It's not as, anywhere near as paper thin as it looks. And they just have great color. It's just a neat looking leaf. Right now it looks kind of, sort of gross, <laughs> right? Because it hasn't opened up all the way. When it unfurls the rest of the way and that leaf fully expands, that won't be quite as ripply. It'll still be somewhat ripply. That color will deepen and intensify in the contrast between the reddish pink and those pretty green veins that'll get even stronger. One of my favorites. Love the spring fling caladium. Look how the water's dancing around in there. That's beautiful. Oh, and speaking of caladiums, look at this beauty. Florida be Oh, I already showed this, didn't I? Well, it probably wasn't a great shot. This is hopefully better. Just getting going, so uh, hopefully there will be better coloration. You never really know what you're going to get with the Florida Beauty Caladiums. That's just been my experience. Sometimes they have beautiful, wonderful, extreme variegation between a couple shades of green and some white speckling and then the pinkish red that's in there. And sometimes they're just, just like this, which is fine. That's still a pretty caladium, and they're big, too. This is still a pretty young start. It hasn't done much growing. That's its biggest leaf it has, and it's bigger than my hand. Love it. Makes me so happy. You know, I think I gained a new appreciation this year for people who live further north when it comes to growing caladiums, because typically, I have my caladiums started in going by mid-May. I usually start them in late April, start them inside, and then some I'll start outside mid-May. And they're usually much bigger than this by this time of year. But with that cold weather we had in April and May, I just, it didn't make sense to pop them in the ground if they were just going to rot. I did throw some in the ground just to see, and they did rot. So I'm glad that I didn't plant them all right away. So it's just, I don't know, it felt weird having to wait until, what was it, late May, early June? that I started getting a lot of these planted. That's okay, they're fast growers. The heat kicks in and they just oof, start growing like crazy and catch up really fast. That's the same thing with the gingers. They were slow to get going, which I was okay with because you know, I thought they were dead. But once the heat hits them, they take off and they're pretty much right about where they would be this time of year regardless. With the early start or a late start, this is about as big as they are right around early July. And look at what I just saw. Some flowers on the crotons. Not much to look at. They're just little balls that pop open with a whitish yellow flower on them. And they get sort of a berry kind of appearance to them on their seed. Only plants out here that aren't doing what I wish they would are the Stuttgart Cannas? Stuttgart? Stuttgart? Not sure. One of y'all told me and I forgot, but I appreciate you telling me. that no variegation. They're growing and starting to do their thing again similar to the caladiums so weird planting them so late and not having them get bigger but again i think that was the right thing to do but no variegation it can take them a while but i don't know after last year and all of the ones i planted having come up just green i'm kind of skeptical i need to not do that I need to give them a chance 
That's not fair. Shouldn't punish them because whoever I bought them from last year sold me something that they probably shouldn't have. Not certain how all that peppermint oil is going to work. It does seem to have slowed down their moving. But the Japanese beetles always kind of move and walk around like they're on something, don't they? I have to wait and see. I'm not going to bother putting up traps for them when I only see like four or five. Where there's four or five, there are probably a heck of a lot more of them. Look at you. Right up there, climbing up just as high as you can. Where do you think you're going? What's going to happen when you get up there? It's a shame they're invasive and destructive because they're actually, they're kind of cute. They're silly little bugs. By silly, I mean they're kind of dumb. Like they just, I've seen them fly directly into the fans out here. <laughs> right into the pool fountain. The June bugs do the same thing. I don't I guess that's just a beetle issue. And they're kind of pretty. They have that iridescent sheen to them in those spots, but... Yeah, I mean, I've had these. I remember the first year that Japanese beetles showed up in St. Louis. It was bad. They destroyed an entire hedge of knockout roses. By an entire hedge, I mean, like, there were like 10 of them. Back in the day, those were the only landscape roses that were around. And it was a big deal, too, to have those. That's a whole different thing to talk about. Wiped all those out, and I had some um, fine line ramus destroyed. Just completely ate them up. And that was, there weren't traps at the time. Everybody was like, we don't know what to do here other than spray, spray, spray. So did that, used chemicals because that's how it was back then and didn't really know what else to do. And I know the traps are a hot topic. People get really upset about them sometimes. But when it comes to pests and insects, there are always some pretty interesting hacks people have. So comment down below or just say hi. I love talking to everybody. I think I need to wrap it up because I got to finish pulling some of this stuff out of the way so that the hot tub place will hopefully show up tomorrow. Notice that they didn't show up today. And then you can get a move on with other things like this whole area. There's so much room here. This is a perfect spot for a trampoline. No, just kidding. I want to leave this open and get that all out of here. And it's, you'll see. You just gotta give it a few weeks. We'll be doing all kinds of fun stuff over here. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. It was an interesting vlog, <laughs> an interesting week. I honestly don't really care what I'm doing as long as I'm outside. I'm having a good time. So, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for ya. Wow, that is a gorgeous shot. Mr. Freckles, you are a sexy plant. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.